Hello, everybody. My name is David. My mother sold me because I'm blind. Yeah, that's the way it is. How often do parents give up their children because of some kind of defect? How many stories have I heard where there are children either not walking or not seeing, like me, who can't hear, can't talk, sit, stand, walk, but their parents? They are so different from my mother. My mother is not like that. And I know for a fact that her daughter is subscribed to this channel. So, Alice, say hi to your mom. I'm going to tell you something here that I haven't told anyone, and I especially haven't told my mom. I still remember that moment when someone came over and mom was wiping away her tears. She was crying, and I couldn't understand why. Mom, who is it? Why are you crying? Nothing, son. This man will look after you for a while. Who is he? You can call me Sam. I didn't know then that Mama was crying because she felt guilty that a minute later Sam handed her an envelope of money. She sold me out like a dog just because I turned out to be a blind kid. My mother had to take me around, driving me somewhere, the constant medical exams, the special school, and then school. She was tired. But I still couldn't understand how I could give up my own child so easily. How could you sell it? I left with Sam. Every day I asked when my mom was coming for me. Finally, he got tired of the questions and told me the truth. David, your mom isn't coming for you anymore. Why not? I'm your dad now and we can help each other. What do you mean? What about mom? Where is she? Is she okay? She's fine. She's living off the money I gave her for you. She sold me to you? Well, why so rude? Think of it as a fair trade. That's how. How much? What? How much is a fair trade? How much is my life worth? Five thousand. That's not a small amount. Ah, I see. Once our neighbor's baby went missing. Some jerk stole him and asked the poor family for one million. And guess what? They had never turned on a light in their life, saving on everything. But when they heard that their baby was in danger, they were ready to find that money and they searched. And their child was sighted. What? Babies with a defect cost less. Everyone has a price to pay. How much is your life worth? It's not for sale. Neither is mine, but no one asked me. You were unlucky with your mother, that's all. Well, what do you need me for? Sam turned out to be some kind of criminal. He used me as a front to work for him as a dealer. He was delivering illicit goods, pirated computer software, unlicensed gadgets, that sort of thing, all over the city. He didn't hurt me, it wasn't in his interest, but I became a slave. Since I had been bought, I had no right to anything that thought ate at me every day. A couple of years later, when I was already a pro and had saved up a decent amount of money, I decided to get away from Sam. I tricked him, told him I would deliver the goods myself, and disappeared, throwing his used equipment in the trash. He couldn't find me because I was clean I had no phone, no headphones, nothing. I'd bought some new clothes that Sam wouldn't have had time to put the chip in. I knew everything else was chipped and I also knew that he would be looking for me. So the first thing I did was change my clothes, then I went to the beauty parlor, where I had them make me blonde from brunette. Then I bought some costume jewelry for my neck and arms, something I never wore, well, and a nose piercing as a ruse. I don't know exactly, but I look different, I guess. Anyway, I had to do something with the blind stick. So I just folded it up and put it in my bag. I knew the city very well, I could identify the streets I wanted by the sounds of traffic lights, the busyness, the smell, I studied trees and buildings to the touch. Tactile sensations became a reader for me plus, I had spent years practicing a beautiful masculine gait. I guess from the outside I looked like a regular guy. I was tall, that's what Sam always told me. So anyway, I went in to eat at the cafe, and I realized I had to go to a new place so they wouldn't find me. The new cafe had an incident right at the entrance, as they had a coffee machine standing almost at the doorstep, which I luckily bumped into and almost fell into the cake display case. I was lucky. The girl working there was more worried about me. It turned out she was the hostess. I looked at the side of her head through black glasses and smiled, and she just off the bat. And where's your cane? What? What cane? I can see that. You need it. What's so obvious? Only a blind man can't see a coffee machine, I'm sorry. Yeah, you're right. You see? Erica. Erica, 
I'm in a little bit of trouble and I don't want anyone to recognize me. I figured it out. Really? Yeah, your ex-girlfriend. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's the one. You're all like that. First, you woo and then you run away. Oh, no, that's not it. I just... She has a boyfriend and I don't want to create a love triangle. Wow, you're way too principled for a man. And you have a lovely voice and you have snow white skin and your hair smells good. What? Well, the absence of one sense makes my other senses more acute. Wow, that's cool. It's an add-on, it's a survival feature, that's all. I stayed there for a couple of hours. Erica occasionally stepped away to serve a customer but generally communicated with me. So quietly her workday was over. I would walk you out, but I feel like you would have to walk me back in afterward. Yes, you're right. But I'm not leaving yet. Why? Because I'm a baker. I bake at night and sell during the day. And when do you sleep? When I have to. Can I be there? Sure. Don't worry. I don't do anything professionally and sit in a chair. No, I don't like it when I work and someone else sits around doing nothing. Erica kneaded the dough and then handed it to me. That night I made my first buns, and then I made cakes, and they were really beautiful. Erica admired me and told me I had talent. No one had ever said that to me. I liked it so much that I rented an apartment near her store and got a job with her. The new design of the cakes captivated the customers. The sweets looked beautiful and delicious. I who intuitively chose the right color and created shapes that I had never seen, only fumbled, and then only once, and so, her business began to flourish. Everyone began to wonder who was helping her. She kept me a secret for a long time until one day something happened. That day Erica was stuck in traffic on her way to work. She called and asked me to sell a few pieces to customers in her place for now. I served a couple of people and then someone came up to me and I heard his voice. I started to feel uncomfortable. What are you doing here? What? You want to be a chef? Doesn't good money appeal to you anymore? What do you want? Guess what, Sammy boy. I don't like my stuff to get lost. And you know that, and you also know that you belong to me too. I'll give you the money you gave my mother, and that's goodbye. Okay. If you want to buy your freedom, go ahead, but it costs more. Five thousand. No, it's twenty-five now, son. Why so expensive? I raised you, I fed you, I taught you a lot. So it's still cheap. Sam, I know what you do, I know where you keep it and how many pieces. And you bought an underage kid, kept him locked up and forced him to work. I could turn you in no time and you'd be locked up for life. Sneaky Sam, well, I know Erica is at my place now, not in traffic, and that if you don't get the 50,000, she's screwed. 25. 50 for her life, 25 for yours. That makes 75,000. Motherfucker, where is she? I jumped him, but I couldn't catch him. Flipped the window, scared the customers. Broke the table and the coffee machine. Still couldn't catch him. Sam wanted me to work for him, but I didn't want that. After all, I was just starting to enjoy life for real. While I was having a shadow fight, Sam got a call from someone, and I found him through the sound and hit him right in the jaw. Sam went down, someone called the police. I fumbled with him and punched him until the cops came and separated us. They took us to the station where Erica came in. I got so excited, I started asking how she was and where she was from. All she said was that no one had kidnapped her and that she was okay. They let me go after an hour, but when I went outside I heard Sam again. The policeman told me to be careful and not to cause any more family drama in the future. Why, why didn't you put him away? He stole the baby me. He kept me in bondage for so many years. David, calm down. Your father may not be perfect, but he's still a father. Who? Sam turned out to be my father. He gave my mom money for nothing. She wanted to put me in an orphanage, but my dad insisted I live with him. He also offered me money, and he took care of me from then on. Well, what about the stolen software and devices? The cops said dad paid the fine, and it's okay. Anyway, mom... If you can hear me, it's okay. Erica and I are dating, and Dad got us a house. And yes, thank you for asking him not to tell me he's my dad just because you've been giving me crap about Dad. But just know now that I'm alive and doing well and without eyesight. Tell me, guys, did you like my story? 
Write your opinion about it in the comments below the video. Don't forget to give likes, share the video with your friends, and subscribe to the channel.